Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce. This is going to be our very last installment of the Hathor material. I hope you guys have enjoyed this just as much as I have. Next week, we're going to be starting on another Tom Kenyon book, which is the Acturian Anthology. And I will put a link to that down in the description box below. I haven't even, I've got the book, but I haven't even looked at it. It just popped up um, on my screen and I just kind of go with that stuff sometimes because I feel like that's a God wink, like read this one next. Um, and so if you are following along with these books, that's the next book we're going to get into. As always, if you're new to the channel, you don't have to. If money is tight for you, you absolutely don't have to order the book because I'm reading them verbatim from my copy. I, I would like for you to have the book so you can always go back and reference it sometimes it means more when you actually read it for yourself so you have your own um, opinions your own perspectives on these topics of course i'm looking at these topics after 17 years of st heavily studying eastern philosophy but somebody else could be looking at these topics from a totally different uh theoretical standpoint and so that's always interesting to see that so if you can afford to get the books i would absolutely suggest doing it but again if not no worries these videos are not going anywhere unless YouTube decides that they're going to be taken down. But also, one other thing before we get into the material, once again, our sponsors for this channel is ASEA. And in the opening credit, there is a phone number for you to text. I would highly suggest ASEA is a very, very new company. And so if you text the number 1-321-216-8047, Bryce Info to, again, that's 1-321-216-8047, Jay from Spiritually Raw will get in touch with you. Now, the reason why it's super important that you text that number before making a purchase is because when you talk to Jay, he can potentially help you get these products at wholesale prices. So we, we definitely don't want people spending more money than they have to on these awesome products. I mean, I love ASEA now. Like I am just floored by how amazing this product is. And we do know money is tight for people. So, you know, if you don't have your help, you don't have anything. So I know people are really prioritizing getting this product in their in their system. But again, Jay can help you get a um, wholesale price if you text that number. Bryce info again to 321-216-8047. I actually, so I was out a couple of days ago with um, my dog and I had done a tea leaf reading, a private tea leaf reading with Sarah, who will be coming back on the channel um, up in Canada. She does tea leaf readings. And she had mentioned something about a flower, that there was gonna be a flower presented to me. And I've talked to you guys about the story about the rose that was left on my doorstep once. Well, another rose was kind of just, I was walking, looking down at the, at the sidewalk and all of a sudden there was a rose there. And I live in the middle of a city. It's not like there's just flowers everywhere. And so I picked it up and I took it home and the rose had obviously fallen out of a bouquet. So it was kind of like half dead, but I put it in a bowl of a sea and it's brought it back to life. So anyway, I was tickled pink because that came out in the tea leaf reading that it would be uh, there would be another flower presented to me. And I was also tickled pink because I got to put it in a bowl of a sea and it actually brought it back to life. So. All right, you guys. So we're going to be uh, starting with page 231 today. Uh, on my book, it's page 231 with strengthening your cough. We have noticed a tendency for many people to overstimulate themselves and to push themselves beyond their physical limit. When you are fatigued and you push yourself further through artificial means such as, such as stimulants, your caw can get depleted. As your physical body reserves get depleted, this can eventually set up a very negative circumstances leading up to physical problems. Beyond that, if your caw becomes depleted, you cannot move forward along the ascending spiral. So it's a balance of rest, exercise, and movement, as well as a wise choice about what to eat and drink. It is also vitally important to maintain positive thoughts and actions. The type of people you associate with also have an effect on your caw. Absolutely, you are the company that you keep. Those who are positive, vital, and uplifting in their nature tend to reinforce your caw, whereas those who are negative, pessimistic, and depleted will tend to deplete you. 
So making decisions about those with whom you live and work based on whether they strengthen or weaken your cause is another aspect to consider. That's why it's vitally important to once again talk about organic portals. So for those who are new and don't know what a cause is, your cause like your energetic body. We've been heavily discussing organic portals. The more you ascend, the more you are going to uh, attract organic portals, which are negative-based people to try to derail you. And so I'm glad they brought this up because you can always sense when an organic portal or a narcissist is around you because it depletes your energy. They're like energy vampires, which we spoke about last week in the Hathor material. And it's up to you to put those boundaries up, right? You don't need to be of service to somebody who is draining you. Martyrdom is a negative polarity. Martyrdom is not positive. It's not of the light. Okay. So I like that they brought that up. Regarding the Kundalini. So once again, Kundalini is the Christ consciousness. The movement of Shechem or life force energy up the Jed or pathway of the chakras is similar to the Kundalini. So in yoga, we call that Shashumna. The Jed, what they call in the Egyptian alchemy is what we call Shashumna. Um, there's a huge misunderstanding in our community where people think the obelisk is Osiris's wiener. It's not. It's it's the spine. It's Shashumna. It, it's an antenna. So as above, so below, as in the macro, so in the micro, you have your own obelisk, your own antenna that runs up your body. That's that energetic pathway that runs up the spine. Again, in yoga, we call it Shashumna. Here they call it the Jed. But there are also other energies that move up the spine besides the kundalini energy. When the rods of power were used in certain types of initiatory experiences, they aroused both Shakem and kundalini, causing them to rise. The kundalini, the electromagnetic energy field of consciousness, is held within the physical body beginning at the root chakra. The kundalini then, it then moves up the spine, and that's also uh, where mola bunda, which is the lock, uh, around Mula Dara. So if you're studying the chakras, but you know nothing about the Bundas, then your study and work on the chakras are just basically pointless because the Bundas are what actually lock in the energy. So if you cannot strengthen your perineum, like basically in between your crotch, then that energy is just falling out, right? That's why um, they've talked about in the Hathor material and lots of other texts. I've talked, spoken about it a lot. There is an element of physical fitness that comes with enlightenment, right? The body is the vessel. So it has to be able, even though the body is not the soul, the body is not what's going to go on forever. It is the vessel that is holding the energy. So therefore it needs to be strengthened. It's like, I've, I've said it before, it's like taking a 10, 10 gallons of water and trying to pour it into a paper cup. The paper cup would bust, right? You need a strong, sturdy cup to hold that water. And as your energy starts to ascend or get more, more powerful your body is going to have to act the same it's going to have to match that energy and so if you think that you can ascend while also being lazy you are sorely mistaken you are sorely mistaken that's why all these ancient practices faiths included exercise now this does not mean that you have to be an olympic athlete but you have to get your body moving and grooving. You've got to get your muscles activated. God gave you those muscles for a reason. And they weren't just to help you do normal stuff day to day. There's a reason for every puzzle piece in the body. And the perineum, the tightening of the perineum is what pulls up. You have mola bunda and then you have udiana bunda and the belly button. And that's pulling the belly button back to the spine and up. So you've got the, the root lock in your perineum that's pulling up. And then that meets the udiana bunda that's also pulling that energy up the spine. All right. So if that's something, if you are someone that thinks you can just bippity ba your, your chakras and be good, no, no means nothing if your bundas are not strong it bippity boppity booing your chakras mean ab absolutely nothing this is why it's so important to have a teacher an actual teacher not someone that's just gone through like a training course but like an actual teacher to help you with this because a little bit of information is a very dangerous thing so you need someone that knows and it, it is highly trained in this to help you dot all your i's and cross all your t's all right
Life force shechem is generated in the solar plexus and then moves up in, down into the sexual organs before moving up into the root chakra and then into the spine. So yes, that's how that energy is working. So you have the solar plexus here, which is pulling up an Uddiyana Bandha. So you have this aponic pranic yo-yo that's going on. It's constantly, the pranic is moving up, the aponic is moving down. Like what would be an aponic energy? An aponic energy would be something like having to go pee. Like you feel that downward force, that downward pressure. Um, having a baby is super aponic. Pranic would be a rising up, doing a handstand, the right, getting up. That's the pranic. Uh, the upward energy is associated with the inhale, the rising up. The aponic energy is the exhale, right? So if you are doing something like a handstand, ask any gymnast. You, if you try to do a handstand on an exhale, your body's not going to go up. It has to come up on an inhale, right? Because it's a rising up. So yes, yeah, so having those locks with the bundas while the energy is going up and down helps that energy yo-yo within your own body. And so you are benefiting from the energy, the movement of that energy and you're not letting it escape through the weak bundas, basically. You can activ activate this type of energy by focusing your attention at your sexual center or sacral chakra. In Egyptian alchemy, these two centers, the solar plexus and the sacral chakra, are focal points for spiritual evolution. Yeah, you have to descend, right? You have to allow the aponic. We've been seeing that. So the root chakra and the second chakra are at the base of your body. They're in the pelvic floor of your body, that bowl of your pelvis. And so that, that's where Kundalini lies as well. It, it, it lies coiled up asleep in that area until it's activated. And then once it's activated, it can start to move up the spine. When your heart chakra is a focal point for whatever energy relationship exists between the rods, i.e. subtle energy pathways between the chakras, those energies are elevated through love. We want to be clear that the vital force of the body and the vital force of consciousness originate in the lower chakras. So you do not and cannot bypass them if you desire to raise your life force. Get out of your head. Get out of the woo-woo for a second and realize where are your feet planted? Where? Look down. Where are your feet planted? On the ground. Your feet aren't in the clouds. They're on the ground. Keep your feet planted on the ground when you're doing spiritual work. You came here to be planted on the ground. All the spiritual stuff, the upper chakra stuff, that stuff you have in the ethers anyway. But you came here to experience the friction of being human. So over and over and over again, we're seeing this spoken about in multiple different spiritual texts. You cannot spiritually bypass the human part of your existence. You have to experience the human part of you in order to ascend. You cannot go hide in an ashram. You will not ascend that way. You cannot live with your head in the clouds. You will not ascend that way. You cannot be in a state of delusion. Oh, the white hats are coming to save me. That's delusional. You won't ascend that way. Go down into yourself. I've done this exercise before. I'm going to do it again now. If you're, if you want to take a, Take out a, a piece of paper and a pencil right now. You can pause the video. Go get a piece of paper and a pencil. Just for you, just be very honest with yourself. Do you struggle with jealousy issues? Whether that is romantically, whether that is being jealous of somebody's job, whether that's being jealous of somebody's business, friendship, looks, whatever. Do you envy them? If so, write down jealousy. Do you struggle with betrayal trauma? Are you constantly waiting for the other foot to drop, the other shoe to drop? If so, write that down. Do you struggle with abandonment issues? Write that down. Do you struggle with anger issues? Write that down. Do you struggle with trust issues? Write that down. All the things you have written on that piece of paper are things that 
you need to dive into and work on. They're not fun. They don't feel good. You can't ignore them. You can't bypass them. You can't blame them on other people. Yes, somebody might have betrayed your trust and that's why you developed the issue, but now it's your issue. You have to heal it. If you refuse to heal it, if you refuse to work on it, and you just want to live in the clouds of denial, then you'll just have to keep repeating third density until you eventually work on it. Your work's never going to be done. You're constantly going to be working on it. But if you don't at least acknowledge it, ascension is out of the question. It's not going to happen. Stop burying your head in the sand. Stop living in a delusional fairy tale world. Do your work. No one's coming to save you. All these issues, these Moladara deep rooted issues, no one can save you from that anyway. I can't fix your jealousy issues. I No one can. I can't fix your fear of abandonment. No one can do that for you. You have to do that yourself. You have to. It's the only way to, to fix it. There's no magic wand. There's no magic pill you can take. And that's your privilege. It is your privilege to be able to fix that yourself. All right, working with the chakras. The heart chakra is the safest chakra for all persons to work with, unless you're an organic portal, because organic portals do not have the heart chakra. They don't have anahata, that's the name of the heart chakra. They only have the first three. So people with sold people, S O U L E D, can work with their heart chakra, anahata. The reason for this has to do with the fact that the heart center is the seat of the soul, which we call the Ku. And this seat of consciousness sits in the heart center, focusing the various energy flows and power rods that we discussed earlier in relationship to your heart is definitely the safest approach unless you have a totally clear understanding of how to work with other chakras. The reason the heart chakra accelerates evolution the fastest for most individuals is due to the fact that it is through the heart center that humans experience unconditional love. When unconditional love becomes your focal point, you are moving upward in the ascending spiral. As previously explained, if you have a sexual relationship with another person while expressing that love in the relationship to your heart, then that feeling will, will feeling state will per permeate permeate, excuse me, your sexual expression, then sexual expression becomes a sac sacred and is elevated. I totally agree with that. I'm not someone, in my personal opinion, I don't think anybody should just be boinking for the sake of, sake of boinking. I think it should be with somebody that you absolutely love and trust. That's just my opinion. You do you, boo, like whatever works for you works for you. But when you also are in an intimate relationship with someone, you then share their karma, you share their energy. So you have to be very careful, especially for a woman, you have to be very careful about who you're literally letting in. All right. And the same way, if you express the relationship between your heart chakra and your power chakra, the solar plexus, Manipura, your expression of power through love elevate, elevates your use of power. If you speak the truth of your being through your throat chakra in a relationship to your heart through love, then your words are elevated and have a benevolent effect. Similarly, if your psychic vision is opening, clairvoyancy, through your brow chakra, anja, or the third eye, then you will physically see those regions of vibratory spectrum you call the astral and etheric realms. If your psychic opening is vibra in vibrational relationship with your heart center and the energy field of unconditional love, you bypass the negative that exists in much of the astral realm and your perception of the subtle realms are elevated. Something similar occurs when you open your crown chakra. If this opening is in relationship to your heart chakra and the feeling state of unconditional love, you will experience the high vibratory aspects of the etheric realms and beyond. So your heart center is the most beneficial focal point in relationship to the other rods or energy flows at this time in human development. So listening to all that they said and looking at the section before where they prepped you and said, none of what they just said is going to happen unless you heal your root chakra first, right? That's the very first thing you heal is the root chakra. So all that other stuff can then be in balance and happen. It's not going to happen through not doing the work on your lower self, as they said in the, the paragraph before that. So super important, you guys, regarding earth chakras. The grid lines of earth are sensitive to the greater cosmic rhythms of the sun and other celestial forces. Consequently, when something gets triggered, say in the sun, it can set off a resonant effect in both the magnetic lines and the non 
magnetic grid lines that run through different areas of the planet, such as the Pacific Rim. Then you can suddenly get an increase of volcanic or earthquake activity, as well as weather anomalies. We expect your scientists will shortly uncover that there is more profound relationship between movements of energy in the sun and what happens on Earth than they realize, which makes sense. Mr. Fox has said that before, like a lot of our volcanoes and weather phenomenons of, you know, tsunamis, we all think it's weather manipulated. Some stuff is, but some stuff isn't, you guys. Again, where are your feet? Look where your feet are. They're on the ground. We have to be grounded. Some of these things that happen in our, our these natural disasters are literally natural disasters because we push all of our energy into the ground as well. And so the earth then has to move that energy. It has to be moved. Yeah? Regarding weather anomalies. Weather and patterns are a complex interaction between physical forces such as heat, temperature, moisture, dryness, and pressure. They are also phenomena related to the subtle realms of the four elements, and it is at this level that they, the weather patterns, can be affected by human consciousness and emotion. Very simply put, some of your weather patterns are an out picturing of collective human emotion and mental life. I literally just said that. I literally just said that. Thank you, Hathors. This may seem odd to those who look at weather solely as a third dimensional earthly phenomenon, but from other dimensions, it is very clear that when some tornadoes and hurricanes move through an area, they are an out picturing of human consciousness interacting with planetary consciousness, as well as the collective consciousness of other planet and animal kingdoms. So we are responsible for some of these natural disasters through our misused energy the number of and when i when i talk about mis, misused energy i'm talking about our emotions not being healed in ourselves and so we push it out into the earth the number of violent weather patterns is on the increase in part is due to the process of chaos collectively human emotions are more volatile and this affects the biosphere where consciousness and biology meet as you look at weather patterns today, you'll see that some tornadoes are occurring where they have not occurred traditionally. Definitely, there is a shifting taking place. Prophecy. Prophecy is a capacity of consciousness to predict the future based on an understanding of what is happening at the moment. It's like mapping out a course of destiny based on an understanding that changes can and do occur and i've said many times that i prefer um probability to prophecy the cassiopeians always say probability because i do think that we have a misunderstanding about prophecy and i think their definition of prophecy is the correct one that is also the definition of probability because changes can and do occur and so sometimes the probability of certain things happen will shift and change but when people say prophecy i think sometimes they think it's set in stone but nothing is ever set in stone so let me reread that paragraph again Prophecy is a capacity of consciousness to predict the future based on an understanding of what is happening at the moment. It's like mapping out a course of destiny based on an understanding that changes can and do occur. Prophecies are possibilities, not facts. Let me reread that again. For the people in the back who didn't hear that and think because something is prophesized, they can just rest in their laurels, slowing the rest of us down for a better tomorrow. Prophecies are possibilities, not facts. Like probabilities, right? They are not written in stone, yet the predictions and prophecies of Earth's disasters are creating extreme anxiety in many individuals. These persons are interpreting prophecy as fact, and this is a misconception. Prophecy is an understanding of what might happen if the course of events continue to unfold the way it is unfolding now. For instance... If you have a shoe that does not fit you and you continue to walk until pain and irritation are felt, then you could prophesize that a blister will result. If you interpret that as fact without choice, then you will not take off the shoe. You could then say to yourself the blister was preordained and that you had no choice in the matter. Unfortunately, we see something like this occurring among those who are prophesizing earth disasters. 
from our perspective, nothing in terms of earth changes is absolute. They are probabilities that may or may not occur based on what happens with human consciousness and earth consciousness. Do not receive prophecies as fact when you hear them, but as possibilities. It is true that there are earth changes because the earth is evolving and so are you. But earth changes do not have to be a cataclysmic as many are reporting. The true function of prophecy is to warn a society and the individual that this is a possibility of what lies ahead. The prophet points to a future destiny that he or she senses intuitively and says, this is where we are heading. Do we want to continue on the path we are taking? Y'all, this is what I've been saying for a long time now. And it's pissed a lot of people off because they think I'm like the Antichrist because I keep telling you guys, you're the storm. The bad guys, 90% of the people in this community are paid by the three-letter agency to come on YouTube to pretend to be a truther, to feed you junk conspiracy so that you don't do anything. And so they win. So the bad guys win. It ain't over until it's over. Do not rest in your laurels. Do your work. If not for your sake, for the rest of our sakes. No one's coming to save you. No one. Plot twist. You are the white hat. Intuition and truth. Your emotional responses to, to any given situation are a result of your perception regarding that situation. Exactly. Karma is neither good nor bad. It's just cause and effect. Your perception of that karma is what makes it good or bad. And through the eyes of duality, which was expressed in the alchemical system of Egypt as the serpent of Adolphus, the serpent of duality, then you will get caught up in the battle of the senses in a third dimensional reality. This is what the yoga sutras are about. We are in a third density reality. So that means there is polarity. There is dark and light. That's why y'all, you keep saying the cabal has gone. No, they're not. Wake up. Get out of your delusion. Where are your feet? Look down. Where are your feet planted? On the earth. We're still in third density. Third density cannot exist without black and white. So the cabal is very much still here. They're still playing this game. They're never going to capitulate, guys. They're never going to surrender. That's not part of their religion. They're on a pathway of service to self. Capitulating or surrendering is service to others. They're never going to surrender. However, your attachment to that story is what keeps them active. Go inside. You stop with the intel. All the intel was knowing certain things is not the great awakening. Knowing about the industry that they're in, we'll say, of carpooling children is not the great awakening. That's not it. That's just the catalyst point. You understanding who you are spiritually is the great awakening. And if that pisses you off, then there's your trigger. Who you are as a human being in this identity is not who you are as an eternal soul. Death doesn't really exist. The body just needs to be changed out. So if you're attaching too much to the story, to the catalyst point, as, as Shanti says, the drama of it all then you haven't even stepped into the Great Awakening. You're not a part of the Great Awakening. Yes, it's awful what they're doing. It's awful, but it's going to continue until we heal ourselves. Through our vibratory healing, do we push this earth into a fourth density positive planet? And in fourth density, there's no more duality because third density is the density of choice. So there has to be duality. You want to get rid of the cabal? Work on your vibration. Work on your healing. Stop being low vibrational. Stop feeding into fear. Stop feeding into delusion. Stop feeding into abandonment. Stop feeding into all these things that feed the third density negative and start working on healing yourself so you can get rid of your enslavement and your shackles and your mental bondage to the brainwashing they've done on you. Then we go forward to fourth density. Then the 
The controllers can't come with us. The controllers can't be in a fourth density positive planet. So if you want to go fourth density positive, knock it off. Work on yourself. Turn YouTube off. Turn me off. Turn Telegram off. Get on your yoga mat. Start journaling. Go to therapy. Start reading the ancient scripture. You're the key. You're the white hat. So let's continue. In a third dimensional reality, you interpret the event as being good or bad, positive or negative as related to yourself. If you judge it as good, you may be elated. If you interpret it as bad, then you might enter into depression, anger, or whatever your familiar emotional pattern is. If you experience a situation through what is called the left eye of Horus, through the initiative facility, or through the eye of Thoth, which is known as the eye of wisdom, the function of what is called the Tahuti, then you will sense something beyond the physical. And yes, Remember, guys, I don't want anybody in that comment section saying something about the Eye of Horus. If you say something negative about the Eye of Horus or thought, then that just shows your ignorance and how little you've actually done to awaken yourself. The darkness can't create anything. Everything we see that the darkness uses was originally created by the light, and we are taking it back. If you are one of these vigilante people that thinks everyone should just be executed, then that shows you how negative and dark your heart is. You are an asset to the cabal at that point. If you're someone that's going around saying, we got to get rid of the eye of Horus, we got to get rid of the pyramids, we got to get rid of all this stuff, then you are part of the problem, not the solution. And you serve, a, at that point, you actually serve a different God. Lucifer is the God of destruction and violence. Our God, the real God, is the God of healing and mercy. Check your vibrational patterning. And if you're so vigilante, violent, about bloodthirsty, then that says more about you, honestly. All right. Since whatever is occurring in the physical realm is illusionary in nature, ding, 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 your freedom comes when you see the truth behind the illusion. That is the whole crux of yoga, to see the truth beyond the illusion. You will, experiencing the, you will still experience the physical reality, but... An emotional level, you sense something beyond the physical through the intuitive eye of Horus or through the eye of Thoth, the wisdom, wisdom facility. Indeed, this ability to sense the truth behind the illusion is known in the Egyptian alchem system as Mahat. This truth behind illusion is the ground from which all things emerge and is essentially ever peaceful and calm, ever unchanging, compassionate, benevolent, and loving in nature. Stop identifying with the story. The story is just the ego. Bryce, my identity as Bryce is just my ego. It's an illusion. The truth of who I am is I am a soul and so are you. This body, this life that we're all living is a hologram. It's an illusion that our soul created in the Emerald Tablets of Thought that we are going through as well. Talk about this hardcore. We created this so that there would be friction for our soul to know itself. Let go of the story, you guys. That's, that's the drama. Let it go. It's not real. What's real is that you are a soul. When you use your function of intuition to align with the higher aspects of yourself and cultivate and perceive everything that happens in life through your intuitive function, you become grounded in the essential love and balance of all things. Then you are not thrown off course by the serpent of, servant of duality. We want to be very precise here. We are not saying to give up on the intellect. The intellect is very critical in the evolution of consciousness. Yes, it's the catalyst point. That's what I was saying. The story is the catalyst point. We are simply saying, do not be seduced by the conditioning of the intellect to accept what appears in the realm of the senses to be reality. From an energetic perception, we would say that cultivating the quality of higher consciousness, the emotion called love, strengthens your intuitive connection to the truth. So the more you love and the more you are able to give you, forgive yourself and those around you, the less you are hooked into the illusion you are freed by the choices you make. And that is the key for who you are when, when, when you free yourself.
spiritual community and spiritual ego. This spiritual ego is an interesting one. Spiritual community is a powerful means to elevate yourself. But the positive benefits of spiritual community are very much relative to the individuals involved in the community. Let's say that two persons from the community go to the grocery store. If one of them is looking at everyone else as inferior, thinking, look at those people. They're not aware. They're not aware of what we are aware of. We are the chosen ones. That's judgment. How many people in the truth or community think, think that you're superior than those who don't know the intel? It's judgment. It's low vibrational. That's spiritual ego. And this is dangerous because he or she is sliding down the spiritual ascension instead of rising up. Another person in the same community could go to the store and see clearly that these people are not aware but hold no judgment about it. Perhaps even have compassion and understanding because they have been there before themselves. They would know that in the infinite asc ascension of the great unending spiral, even their expanding consciousness is limited compared to others beyond them. Be humble. What you create in terms of acceptance and peace is a critical issue. Our har harmonic is set up when people of like minds and hearts are together, and it reinforces their own vibratory fields in that higher realm. But... We would also say that it is valuable to interact with as many other people as possible. People who don't have the same vibratory field as you or share the same opinions as you. This exchange provides an opportunity for you to master your judgments and relate with different energies from a place of stability and balance. And this type of open-mindedness will accelerate your evolution quickly. Interaction with beings who are not of your like-minded can be the most instructive. So don't separate yourself from people who aren't like you. Surround yourself with people who are not like you. Same-sex intimacy. There is nothing intrinsically limiting about homosexual or lesbian lifestyles in terms of the call if the sexual energy is elevated. So they talk about this in Magdalene's manuscript as well, about it's not, it's fine. It's, it's different, but it's not, it's not a sin to be gay, you guys. Not to love another person is to see the face of God. If homosexual men were to practice, practice the ancient Taoist and tantric methods for sexual pleasure without ejaculating, they would strengthen their cause, elevate their sexual energy to their higher centers and experience more intense levels of pleasure. When the sexual energies are elevated, it is possible for every cell of the body to go into orgasmic ecstasy. Men generally confine orgasm to the pelvic area. But as they work with these ancient me methods, they will discover that the orgasm need not be limited to this one area. Generally speaking, a woman's ka vitality is stronger than a man's. This is genetically determined since women have to lend their ka if they carry children. The fetus actually draws upon the mother's ka to develop and be birthed. This is the one reason that mothers and their children often have powerful and deep bonds to each other. So women are predisposed to having stronger cause than men. They also tend to be more sensitive to the cellular orgasm, although men can certainly develop this ability. Women in sexual relationships with each other can use the sexual energy to expand their consciousness by bringing the rush of orgasm up the pranic tube during orgasm and from there circulating it through the body. The Taoist and Tetric method used by women are similar for those used by men, except that, of course, there is no need to retain semen. From an energetic standpoint, all persons are both male and female. Yes, the left nostril is the feminine energy, the right is the masculine. And we see how the darkness has inverted that, right? Because darkness can't create anything. They can only steal and invert. At the subtle levels of energy and consciousness, you are potentially androgynous, meaning balance between the sexual polarities of your being. And thus, it is not necessary from an alchemical standpoint to have a partner in order to elevate your sexual energy. The ancient understanding of celibacy has, celibacy has, for the most part, been lost. In the mystery schools of ancient Egypt, there were certain periods when the initiates would temporarily requ were required to remain celibate. Same with yoga. It's called brahmacharya. The purpose was, a, was to allow the student to explore his or her own sexually based energy patterns. By entering these realms of the self, 
The initiate could facilitate the merging of his or her male and female aspects, an event termed alchemical or sacred marriage. Now, however, celibacy has simply become avoidance or suppression without any understanding of the energetics involved. Interesting. You don't need a sexual relationship to reach high states of consciousness and sexual energy can be circulated internally without the need of a partner. If you choose to practice celibacy and at the same time stimulate your life force to rise from your root and sexual centers near the base of your spine to your crown chakra, you will experience bliss and ecstasy. But it's way more fun with someone else. <laughs> As the release energy moves up your spine into the higher centers, it's open higher states of awareness and consciousness. For those choosing a celibate path, we would encourage learning how to circulate your sexual energy internally. True celibacy is not suppression, but rather a raising up of the life force. Regarding human emotions. In terms of human evolution, love is where you are heading. It is your potential to experience the emotion of love continuously on all levels of consciousness. This is something that we have attained, and that is why we are aligned with you. And this is why many beings from other realms throughout the universe are observing you. They can observe your situation and your emotional responses, even though some of the beings observing you don't have feelings and emotions themselves. They yearn to have emotion. It's a missing piece for them. And the funny thing is that many humans avoid what these beings find desirable, namely feelings and emotions. The reason the earth as a good training vessel for emotions and feeling goes back to the beginning and earth's position in relationship to the physical sun. Here on earth, the development of vegetation and the result increase of oxygen enabled life as you know it to emerge. And there is a vital relationship between emotions and oxygen. Hence, why yoga, we practice pranayama, a breath work practice. Hence why they tried to cover us up. Right? Your methods of working with the breath that the yogis call pranayama, I just said that, demonstrate this, altering the breath to balance emotion is founded in this understanding that oxygen and life force or prana have a direct relationship to emotion. Right, as I said earlier, the inhale is pranic, the exhale is aponic. The inhale is upward moving energy, the exhale is downward moving energy. So you have a planet that has developed an environment that is highly conductive that is highly conducive to experiencing emotion. And this was recognized quite early by many cultures and civilization, including those that are intergalactic. Thus, the word went out and souls deliberately incarnated on earth to experience this opportunity. Open heartedness. Many patterns held in the emotional body can be carried from lifetime to lifetime. And if you experience being shut down or even damaged from being open hearted in a previous existence, then that pattern might present itself in your current life. It's important to understand this and be gentle with yourself around these types of issues. I will also remind you guys, if you are carrying over trauma from a past life, it is not necessary. In fact, it's not even helpful to go back and know what happened in that life. What's helpful is healing it here in this life now. This is the life you're in. Again, look down at your feet. Where are your feet? They're on the ground. They're not somewhere else. They're here with you now. Also, remember that the process of opening does not mean making yourself vulnerable to all those who cross your path. It means being discriminative to about, to, about when to open and with whom. Exactly. That's why we're talking about organic portals. This goal is to be, a, is to be able to open when you wish rather than not having any choice about the matter. If you have a strong emotional memory pattern, you may feel that you have no choice and remain closed in order to protect yourself. Through understanding this mechanism, you can begin the process of reopening your heart consciously and then choosing the people and occasion when it's appropriate to expand. For us, universal love is the essential balance point for our emotional responses. This balance point is a vibratory field of high coherency that you call unconditional love and unconditional acceptance. Living our lives in this vibratory field allows us to move up the ascending spiral of consciousness. Then we can assist others who may not be in the vibratory field of love, who may not love themselves or may be actively hurting themselves or others. We have found that being in the vibratory field of love and experiencing all situations from the po that positive feeling state has been the greatest catalyst of our own evolution, the flower of life. 
The flower of life is a fundamental pattern of the universe. Even the molecular and atomic grids are laid out in this pattern. Therefore, it's the platform that unfolds destiny. It's a blueprint. Without it, there would be no manifestation as you experience it. And the flower of life is spoken about heavily in the Emerald Tablets. Planting seeds of higher density. Thoughts or actions entertained in other lifetimes can have their karmic effect in your present life. This is not a punishment, but an opportunity for the soul to recognize the fruits of its action. Exactly. It's never a punishment. It's always a learning opportunity. To the advancing or ascending soul, life events are seen as wondrous and beautiful things, for they afford the possibility of healing, and healing the past is crucial to the ascension of consciousness. Therefore, whatever events unfold in your life, embrace them with the awareness, compassion, and intelligent choice. Don't decry your fate, accept what happens, not as a kind of resignation or giving in, but rather as an acknowledgement of what is actually occurring. From this owning or acceptance of your situation, you can move to change those things that are in your power to change. This attitude of acceptance will then enable you to elevate yourself through the harmonic of self-love and right action, thereby planting the seeds of higher density and greater spiritual power. In service, every interaction you have with another human being is an opportunity to serve life. When you stop to fill your car with gas, when you go to the grocery store, or when you see a fellow worker, it's an opportunity to be kind. If you are so rushed or so involved with your own affairs, however, that other people are merely objects, then you have missed a moment of your sacredness. You have missed an opportunity to serve life. But when you are in these situations and you pause for just a moment, remembering that you are with another human being, sharing the sacred mystery of life, then you have an opportunity to serve life. Every relationship is an opportunity. It's not just how much you say or do. It's an attitude that is being held with your energy field. Simply hold the attitude that all persons you meet, whether you like them or not, are part of the great mystery, because that is an accurate description. Indeed, if you truly hold that belief and that remembrance in yourself, then you are making something, sa something sacred or holy. The true meaning of holy goes back to the concept of wholeness, to make whole. To make whole is to do holy work, which is the sacred task of unifying the universe in your awareness. By acknowledging that all beings are value, you serve life. You may not know who they are, their history, or what they believe, but they are part of life, and so you acknowledge them. If you hold that intent into your energy field, love and acceptance get communicated to others without you having to say a word, and that is serving life. Finally, we would like to express our deepest gratitude to you, our brothers and sisters in human form. You have come to this planet at this time to pass through the great portal of change, to shift to a new dimension of consciousness. Knowing as we do how difficult this is, how challenging, but also how rewarding it is, we stand on the other side of time, as it were, with our arms outstretched to welcome you into the intergalactic and interdimensional realms of life. We bring this material to you in great humility, with hope that it may be of service to you. If what we have shared with you can be used to enrich your life, then so be it. If the things we share do not touch you, then pass them by. Whatever your choice, we honor you in this moment which is charged with opportunities for an evolutionary unfolding that has not been seen in the universe since the beginning of time. Within you, the human is a great mystery waiting to unfold itself and to be dazzle you. All that is needed is the touch of love. So love yourself, love others. It's that simple. So be it through all time and space, we are your spiritual companions, the Hathors.